Joseph Benedict Joe Hockey is a former Australian politician who was the Member of Parliament for North Sydney from 1996 until 2015. He was the Treasurer of Australia in the Abbott government from September 18, 2013 until September 2015 when he resigned from Cabinet, having refused an alternative offer from the incoming Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull. He previously served as the Minister for Human Services and Minister for Employment and Workplace Relations in the Howard government. Hockey's parliamentary resignation triggered a 2015 North Sydney by-election where he was succeeded by Trent Zimmerman who had previously worked for Hockey as a staffer. He was announced on December 8, 2015 to become the next Ambassador of Australia to the United States when Kim Beasley's term ends in early 2016. Early Life and Career Hockey was born in North Sydney to a Bethlehem-born Armenian-Palestinian father, Richard, and an Australian mother, Beverly. He has three elder siblings. His father's original surname, Hockeydonian, was anglicised to Hockey in 1948 after arriving in Australia. Hockey attended St Aloysius College, Milsons Point and the University of Sydney, residing at St John's College, graduating with a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Laws. While at university he was president of the University of Sydney Students' Representative Council, and assisted in inviting Pope John Paul II to visit the University of Sydney during the 1986 Australian paper visit. In 1987, Hockey protested at Bob Hawke's introduction of university fees. Hockey's term as SRC president, besides the protests, included the renovation of the club's headquarters, a cutback on the expenses of Honey Swa, the closure of the SRC women's room, but the opening of a free legal advice service. Towards the end of his term as SRC president, Labour's Deputy Prime Minister Lionel Bowen phoned Hockey and invited him to join the ALP. Hockey researched the philosophies of John Stuart Mill and decided to join the Liberal Party. Upon graduating, Hockey worked as a banking and finance lawyer at Cause Chambers West Jarth and subsequently as the Director of Policy to the Premier of New South Wales, before entering politics. Political Career Hockey worked as a policy advisor to Premier John Fay before the New South Wales state election, 1995. Hockey became the president of the NSW Young Liberals and had a position in Nick Greiner's state government, reforming the financial and business structure of the state. Equals Howard Government Equals, Hockey was pre-selected as a Liberal Party of Australia candidate for the 1996 election in the division of North Sydney when aged just 29. He faced little pre-selection competition for a candidacy that required him to defeat North Sydney incumbent independent Ted Mack. Had Mack's intention to retire at the 1996 election been known earlier, Hockey would have faced a more rigorous pre-selection contest for the normally safe Liberal seat. When contesting the 1996 election, Hockey bought a bus which he painted in the colours of the North Sydney Bears, which had the effect of positioning Hockey as an independent and showed Hockey's local ties. Hockey would park the bus everywhere in his electorate to raise awareness. Robert Orell, Hockey's campaign manager in 1995, states that Hockey presented himself as a Liberal in John Howard areas like Lane Cove, but as an independent in North Sydney in McMahon's Point. Hockey's parents and business connections were also key to his success, his parents were well-liked locals who knew the area well, and his business connections allowed him to give umbrellas and other souvenirs to supporters and volunteers. A key issue in the 1996 election was the issue of aircraft noise. Laurie Brereton, the ALP transport minister, had closed east-west runways and opened north-south runways at Sydney Airport diverting aircraft noise from Labour seats to Liberal seats. Hockey was elected to the Australian Parliament in 1996. He was appointed the chair of the Sydney Airport Community Forum. During this time, Hockey formed a friendship with Anthony Albanese, and Albanese took Hockey to his electorate to see the inequalities of the airport routing. Following this, Hockey worked to address inconsistencies in the airport noise amelioration program. Hockey, Chris Gallus and Susan Jeans founded the short-lived John Stuart Mill Society to combat the conservative Leon Forum. Hockey made his maiden speech in September 1996, highlighting modern liberalism, composed of recognition of the rights of the individual, parliamentary democracy, 
and committing to improve society through reform. Hockey highlighted his father's heritage, and highlighted barriers against women achieving success. In the lead-up to the 1998 election, which Hockey characterized as the GST election, despite being the minister in charge of the GST, Hockey stopped campaigning shortly before the election because he felt that talking about the GST was losing him votes. He was awarded the Minister for Financial Services and Regulation portfolio from 1998 to Euro 2001 and Minister for Small Business and Tourism. In January 2000, Hockey had done an interview with the John Laws program about the GST, confirming the ACCC's position of businesses being able to round up or down the price of goods and services when needed. This caused controversy, and the Daily Telegraph printed a story that declared that voters could be charged more than the 10% GST promised. When HIH Insurance went bankrupt in March 2001, Joe Hockey was the minister responsible for the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority, which oversaw HIH. Although Hockey's office had sought written assurances from HIH that everything was fine, the public felt that Hockey was to blame. Upon learning that the estimated damages were between $4 minus $8 billion, Hockey took this to the cabinet and sought a bailout. Peter Costello advised that APRA should sort out HIH. After the collapse of HIH insurance, Hockey became concerned about NRMA insurance, and called Australian Securities and Investments Commission, the ACCC, APRA and the Australian Taxation Office and instructed them to investigate NRMA insurance thoroughly. As part of his work as tourism minister, Hockey produced a white paper analysing the tourism industry. With the return of the Howard government in 2004, he was appointed Minister for Human Services and was elevated to the cabinet in January 2007, when appointed Minister for Employment and Workplace Relations. In 2004 as Human Services Minister, Hockey proposed an access card, and spent $3 million advertising the card before submitting the legislation to Parliament. Hockey regularly appeared on the Seven Network's morning program Sunrise and the Big Guns of Politics section debating the opposition leader, Kevin Rudd, drawing 20,000 to 30,000 additional viewers who would tune in specifically for that segment until the arrangement was mutually terminated on April 16, 2007 following controversy over plans to stage a pre-dawn Anzac Day service in Vietnam. Hockey credits this show for introducing him to an audience who had no interest in politics. Equals opposition equals, in December 2007, Hockey was made Shadow Minister for Health and Aging and Manager of Opposition Business in the House. In September 2008 he became Shadow Minister for Finance competition policy and deregulation. He became shadow treasurer in February 2009 when Julie Bishop stepped down from the portfolio. Prior to his appointment as shadow treasurer there had been a move to get Hockey to transfer to New South Wales state politics to replace Barry O'Arroll as state liberal leader and lead the New South Wales coalition to victory at the 2011 state election which would make Hockey the premier of New South Wales. Hockey, however, denied any interest to move into New South Wales state politics. The push to get Hockey into New South Wales state politics came to an end when he was promoted to shadow treasurer as that placed him within striking distance of becoming federal leader. Hockey's popularity among voters grew under the leadership of Malcolm Turnbull and, in October 2009, polls showed him as the preferred Liberal leader. However, Hockey announced that he had no intention to challenge for the leadership. On November 9, 2009, Hockey gave a speech, in defence of God, at the Sydney Institute. Australia has embraced religious diversity. It must always remain so, and as a member of Parliament I am a custodian of that principle of tolerance. That is why it is disturbing to hear people rail against Muslims and Jews, or Pentecostals and Catholics. Australia must continue, without fear to embrace diversity of faith provided that those gods are loving, compassionate and just. A news poll released on November 30, 2009 placed Hockey at 33%, Turnbull at 30% and Abbott at 19%, when voters were asked who would be the best person to lead the Liberal Party. Speculation flourished that Hockey would challenge Turnbull for the leadership of the Liberal Party, 
and Hockey consulted senior party dignitaries such as Howard and Costello about whether he should run. Hockey faced a dilemma. A moderate in the Liberal Party, Hockey had been a consistent supporter of the ETS. Running against Turnbull would mean taking the leadership with the support of the party's right-wing and climate change skeptics. On December 1, 2009, Hockey chose to include his candidacy in a party room ballot to determine the leadership of the Liberal Party of Australia. The ballot was between Hockey, Malcolm Turnbull and Tony Abbott. Hockey was eliminated in the first round of the ballot, with the eventual winner being Abbott. Following the change of leadership, Hockey remained shadow treasurer. He told ABC TV's Q&A audience on March 7, 2011 that corporate Australia had fallen behind in female boardroom representation and if companies failed to meet a reasonable target within a period of time then more punitive measures needed to be taken by Parliament. He later said that quotas must be a last resort. Hockey gave a speech to the Grattan Institute on March 11, 2010 called in defense of liberty. The speech defended anti-terrorism laws and rejected a hypothetical Bill of Rights, while criticizing increased police powers. Hockey gave a speech to the EIDOS Institute on April 14, 2010 called in defense of enterprise. Hockey gave a speech to the Sydney Institute on March 9, 2011 called in defense of opportunity. Hockey gave a speech to the University of New England on July 27, 2011 called in defense of youth. This series of speeches were seen as Hockey's bid for the Liberal leadership. Biographer Madonna King points out Australia Euro unregistered trademark as future engagement in the Asian century, and the future of free markets, global trade and commerce as are the key speeches from this three-year period of Joe Hockey trying to show what he stood for. On April 17, 2012, Hockey gave a speech at the Institute of Economic Affairs in London. He warned Australians that the time to become self-sufficient was at hand and that the government could not afford to give universal payments to Australians. The speech was controversial in Australia, sparking discussion on the ABC Late Line program and an article in The Australian. The speech was said to change the public's perception of hockey from avuncular to hard head and foreshadowing hockey's first budget. On April 26, 2012, hockey gave a speech. The Future of Australian Diversity, at the Islamic Council of Victoria. To judge Islam based on the actions of extremists and terrorists would be no different than judging Christianity on the actions of those who have over the centuries committed atrocities in the name of Christianity. Equals Abbott Government equals, in 2014, the end of the age of entitlement was used to justify the government refusing financial assistance to Holden in South Australia and SPC Art Mona in Victoria and explaining why they could not participate in Barnaby Joyce's proposal for a bailout of farmers. Hockey's approach has been described by sociology lecturer Verity Archer as being like Nixon's, using claims of a budget emergency to cut welfare. In April 2014, Hockey faced criticism for saying the poorest people either don't have cars, or actually don't drive very far, when seeking an increase in the fuel excise tax. In May 2014, Fairfax Media published a story stating that donors to the North Sydney Forum were able to have VIP meetings with Hockey, under the title Treasurer for Sale. Hockey delivered the 2014 budget on May 13, 2014. The austere budget faced widespread criticism and was overwhelmingly rejected by the Australian public as reflected in all opinion polls after its release. Michael Pascoe, writing for the Sydney Morning Herald, regards hockey as being saddled with policies that were fiscally irresponsible, but designed to win support, giving as an example the scrapping of the price on carbon. Hockey was considered by his colleagues to have made a poor case for the economic reforms in the 2014 budget. The Guardian writes that criticism of the budget as unfair harmed hockey's public image. After the February 2015 Liberal Party leadership spill motion, there were calls for hockey to be replaced as treasurer. In the lead up to the 2015 budget, Abbott stated that no matter how the budget was received, hockey would continue as treasurer. Hockey delivered the 2015 budget. This was considered a vast contrast to the 2014 budget. In June 2015, Hockey was criticised over his response to housing affordability issues, where he advised first home buyers to get a good job that pays good money. In August 2015, P. 
Peter Fitzsimons, chair of the Australian Republican Movement, announced that Joe Hockey would help lead a parliamentary friendship group aimed at a referendum on an Australian republic before 2020. This led to criticism of Hockey by members of the coalition, who regarded the renewed push for a republic to be a distraction from the government's priorities. Later in August, a leak stated that two cabinet ministers were urging Abbott to reassign Hockey as treasurer. Following the successful 2015 Liberal leadership spill, there was growing speculation that the new Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, would not reappoint him as treasurer in his new government. Although Turnbull offered Hockey a different role in his government, Hockey declined and on September 20, 2015 announced his intention to leave Parliament. Hockey gave his final speech to Parliament on October 21, 2015. Equals parliamentary resignation and U.S. Ambassador role equals, Hockey resigned from Parliament on October 23, 2015 which triggered the 2015 North Sydney by-election which was won by Trent Zimmerman. It was announced on December 8, 2015 that Hockey would become the next ambassador of Australia to the United States when Kim Beasley's term ends in early 2016. Personal life, Hockey met Melissa Babbage, his future wife, in 1991 at a young Liberal state convention. In 1994, Hockey married Babbage, an investment banker, later head of foreign exchange and global finance at Deutsche Bank. The couple has three children and they live in Hunters Hill, New South Wales. Upon the birth of his youngest child, Hockey became the first federal minister to take paternity leave. He has walked the Kokoda track and has climbed Mount Kilimanjaro to raise funds for medical equipment. Hockey and his wife own a 200 hectare cattle farm in Milanda, near Cairns, Queensland. In 2012, he lost more than 20 kilograms following gastric sleeve surgery. In 2014 Hockey launched defamation proceedings against Fairfax Media over an article published in its newspapers, the Sydney Morning Herald, The Age and the Canberra Times, titled Treasurer for Sale, which he said falsely implied that he accepted bribes paid to influence his decisions and that he corruptly sold privileged access to a select group of Liberal Party donors. A trial was held to determine whether the allegations were defensible in March 2015 in the NSW Supreme Court before Justice Richard White, where Hockey argued that false allegations of the nature contained in the article, and the conduct of Fairfax during the proceedings, evidenced a malicious intent to smear his otherwise good reputation and consequently would justify the award of aggravated damages. In June 2015, the judge partially ruled in favor of Hockey, ruling that where the headline had been seen without the article, it was defamatory, and awarded Hockey $200,000 in damages. Fairfax was ordered to pay 15% of Hockey's court costs. See also, Abbott Government, Howard Government, Work Choices a Euro part of Hockey's portfolio as Workplace Relations Minister. North Sydney by Election, 2015. References External links, Official Website Profile at theyvoteforyou.org.au, Profile at Parliament of Australia official website.